So one of the things that uh, messaging applications and email applications do is they allow you to track what messages you have read versus what messages you haven't read. We are not doing that right now. We want to be able to make a record of whether the message was read or not, as well as have uh, this guy over here. You see this? There is counters, right? We need to be able to show counters. We need to be able to show how many messages are unread in a particular folder, okay? We talked about this in the uh, data modeling video where uh, you really cannot have the concept of a transaction where you manage, like, okay, I'm going to send a message and then update the the red count, the unread count by one. That's not, well, you can technically do it. Cassandra does have a concept of transactions, but you wouldn't want to use it unless it's really, really necessary, right? Transactions and distributed databases, there is some tension there. They don't always uh, work really well together. So what I, you know, we decided was to use the counter column in Cassandra and have that take care of the counter. The disadvantage of doing that is that you cannot really stick that counter column into any Cassandra table. Okay, there, is, there are some restrictions to it. When you create a counter column, it has to be in a table which doesn't have any other non-primary key columns. Okay, you have to put a primary key and then the counter. That's about it. So I couldn't put this in the folders table because there could potentially be multiple other columns in the future. So I'm going to have to create a new table for this. And we had created this uh, table called unread email stats. And uh, this is what it looked like, right? You have 100 email stats, which had the user ID as a clustering column, the user ID as a partition key, sorry, a label as a clustering column, and then the number 100 as the counter, right? This is the counter column that we're going to use for tracking how many emails or how many messages in that folder for this user is 100. And we're going to have the repository pattern here again, and we're going to have increment and decrement for it. The thing about using a repository pattern for this is there isn't really like a built-in method for it. You're going to have to create a method and use uh, queries, right? You can use the add query annotation on top of method to write that query, right? So let's, let's take it one step at a time. Let's start by creating this table and uh, we're going to use the the entity class again and put annotations on top of it to create this table. And then we'll see how to work on this table, right? How do you how do you increment a column? How do you decrement a column? So let's take a look at that after. We're going to start with looking at the, the table creation itself. All right, so I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code. And uh, here I'm going to create a new model class. And this is going to be I'm thinking I'll just put it in the folders because there's a part of folders. We had to split it because of the the counter requirements, but this is essentially a part of folders. I'm going to create a new class called unread email stats. Okay, this is a class and this is going to mirror some of the things that we have over here. Okay, I'm going to put this here and uh, I'm going to call this unread email stats. This is going to contain the user ID. It is going to contain the label. And then it is going to contain the unread count, right? So given a single user and a folder, what are the number of messages that are unread? So these two are primary key columns. This one's a partition key. This one's a clustering column. Okay, so I'm going to put those things as well. And again, I'm going to copy from here. As you can tell, they're pretty much the same. And uh, folder is, folder has this as a clustering column. So I'm going to put this as a clustering column here, right? Just to highlight the fact that this is exactly the same, right? And basically the same structure in terms of the primary key as the folder, except that I have this one extra column, which is the counter column, right? I'm going to call this, well, I'm going to set the Cassandra type to be, what's the type? There's a counter, yeah, right? So I'm specifying this as a counter so that this gets created as a counter column in Cassandra, right? I'm going to generate getters and setters for all the fields 
that we have. And I'm going to create a repository. 100 email stacks repository. This is an interface which extends Cassandra repository. And the type parameters are unread email stats, which is the entity. And what is the primary key? The primary key is a string. So that's going to be the second type here. All right. This is, this is the unread email stats repository. I'm going to mark it as repository so that it knows what to do. All right. So if I refresh, reload the server, it is going to create this this table in the database. So let's check that out and see what you need to do in order to increment and decrement that as far as queries are concerned using CQL. Okay, so I'm in the dashboard here. I'm going to say use main and then select star from 100 email stats. So you see here it has created these these three columns. Now I can fetch data from this table just like any other uh, repository pattern that we've seen so far. I can do a find all by ID, which is kind of what I want to do, right? It's going to be very similar to what we've done for the folder repository, right? What have we done for the folder repository? We've done find all by ID. Given a user ID, get all the folders. We will have to do something similar for unread email stats because again, it's they're, they're sibling entities and repositories, right? So I'm going to make this 100 email stats, list of 100 email stats, and I'm going to do find all by ID. Okay, given an ID, get me all of the 100 email stat uh, records that's available in that table. Okay, so I have uh, three folders. I might have three different entries there, or if nothing is available, so let's say all my uh, emails in a certain folder are read, there may not even be an entry there, right? So that's, this is going to fetch all the information. What I cannot do is save. Since this table is a special table, it has a counter, I cannot say I want to create a new 100 email stats where the 100 count is 10. I cannot do that. What I need to do is do increments and decrements because that's how counters work. If I need Kaushik Kothagal inbox 10, I'm going to have to do Kaushik Kothagal inbox increment so that eventually the counter gets to 10, right? I cannot insert stuff. So in order to increment, I need to run the update query, okay? Let me show you how that looks like. So here is the uh, empty table that was created courtesy of the repository pattern. Now, I cannot do an insert here. It's not going to work. It's going to complete. So here's how the update works. I can say update 100 email stats set what's the counter the value that i'm setting it's 100 count right i'm going to say 100 count equals 100 count plus one there what are the fields user id equals my user id for example and a uh, label equals inbox okay now notice what happened here this, the, the, the records that was addressed by this where clause doesn't exist, right? This table is literally empty. I said, update this where user ID is this and label is this. Typically what happens when you do an update, the where clause in identifies what are the rows that needs to be affected. And then the update is going to perform that update operation on it. Here, the table was literally empty and I'm doing a where clause here. By common sense, you feel like, okay, that's not going to affect anything. But the way counters work here is, it is the where clause is going to indicate what is it that it's going to work. So you can almost imagine this empty table as kind of this infinite set of infinite values with all of the all of the counters being zeros. Every value you can conceive of is there with the value zero. So you can kind of think of it that way. So when you do an update and uh, set the counter, it is going to set the counter for that. So if I were to do a select, you see here now I have a new uh, record with the values that are specified and the count is one. Okay, if I run that query again, the count becomes two. I can do a decrement, uh, you know, 100 count equals 100 count minus one, and then it would go one level, one down, right? It's basically doing counter-based manipulation rather than setting the value itself. 
Okay. So this is uh, this is what this is how counters work. Now, how do I manifest that in the repository pattern? Well, you don't have a, a find. There's not a finder method, so I can't write a find by this and that and that which we use for the other repository. But I can use the at query annotation. The Spring Data projects support the at query annotation, where you can define a method and then stick an at query annotation on top of it, provide the query, and it is going to execute that query when you run that method. Okay. So let's say I have a method here which says uh, I'm going to call it, let's say this is a void and uh, I'll say increment counter. Okay, well increment 100 count, which is what this is, okay? And it's going to take the same kind of parameters as this query did. What are the two parameters? It is user ID and the label, okay? So I'm going to make this string user ID string label. Okay, this would be the ideal method. Okay, I would also need a decrement, but again, it would take this uh, user ID and the label. We are interested in one at a time, so this is this is all we need. Now, how do we tell Spring Data to run this particular query every time that is accessed? Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this query here and uh, fix this here. Kind of clean this up. Okay, so here is my query, right? This is my query. I put this as a string. Now I'm, I need to say, hey, Spring Data Project, run this query every time this is run, and then plug in the values from these methods, right? This user ID needs to go here, and this label needs to go here, right? You do this by using the at query annotation. Okay, this allows you to say, Run this query when this is called. I don't need this semicolon here. Okay. Now, when I do this, I also need to specify what are the parameters. This is the first parameter. It needs to get from the first argument of this method. I'm going to say question mark zero. All right. Parameter number one. And then this is question mark one, which is parameter number two. All right. So once I do this, Spring Data knows that whenever this method is called, it is going to run this query on on Cassandra, so it's going to affect this at this table, okay? So it's as simple as that. Now what I need to do is basically copy this over for this guy, okay? This is going to be under count minus one, where uh, the user ID is that and the label is that, okay? Now I have these methods which allow me to specify what the count is, okay? Now here, since I have this, I'm going to I'm going to see this data, okay? So I'm going to go to uh, the inbox app, which is the uh, this is the place where we are hard coding some values. I'm going to get the hundred count repository as well. Hundred email stats repository, and. Um, I'm going to call the increment a couple of times, okay? So after creating the folders, I'm going to say unread email stats repository dot. I'm going to increment unread count for the user, my username, and uh, the inbox. Okay. I want this. Val this value to be set to let's say and um, let's make it let's make it three okay so I want three increments so when this application starts it is going to call it's going to call this method and what does this method do it is going to run this query in CQL and it's going to update those uh, those counters and it's going to work fine so this is a way it's kind of a workaround to work with. Uh, counters because the repository pattern doesn't really fit with counters. Not that it's not supported. I'm trying to imagine how they would even make it fit. It doesn't quite work. So that's the reason why the at query annotation is uh, the best solution for for this particular problem. I'm going to go back here and uh, let's see. I have three as I'd expected. The server started. It ran those increments, and now I have three here. So now what's left to do? is wire in this count 
to the folder view. That's the first part. The second part is to track the increments and decrements whenever there is a change, right? So when somebody sends you an email, you need to increment the inbox. When somebody uh, reads an email, you need to decrement. It reads an unread email, really, you need to decrement the folder that that email is in, all right? So we're going to have to do all of those things next. Now, before I do that, I'm going to commit these changes. I realize I haven't committed the compose part of it as well. The email service, let's see, what have I not committed? Yeah, it's the compose and the email listing, all right? So I'm going to grab this uh, compose feature plus unread email stats. Okay, so those two are going as a part of this commit. So refer to this commit if you're stuck with any of the things that I talked about in this and uh, the previous video. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to wire this in to the, the folder sidebar so that it displays the count.